Faced with the challenge of development, every nation must choose a strategy or a path to development. Historically, these paths have fallen into two major categories, self-sufficiency and international trade. The self-sufficiency path, also called the balanced growth approach, aims to spread investment across all sectors and all regions of the economy equitably. The goal is for the country to develop on its own without relying on outside help or foreign markets. To achieve this, nations impose import barriers such as high tariffs or quotas on foreign goods. This protects the local industries from foreign competition, allowing them to grow domestically. While promoting local diversity, the self-sufficiency path has major downsides. It fosters inefficiency, since local industries have no reason to innovate or improve, and requires a large, often corrupt bureaucracy to enforce the numerous regulations. This path has largely fallen out of favor with nations. The other path, the international trade path, it takes an approach that is championed by many successful economies today and argues that a developing country can achieve development faster by concentrating its resources on the limited industries where it has a competitive advantage, and then selling those goods globally. This path is classically mapped out by economist W. W. Rostow's Stages of Economic Growth. It starts with, first, the traditional society that is characterized by a high percentage of people in the primary sector, which is agriculture or farming. Now this society also has limited technology and most of the wealth is invested in non-productive activities like religion or one's military. Next comes the preconditions for trade-off. This is an elite group that starts to invest in new technology and infrastructure like roads, a water system, and banking, the items that are necessary for future industrial growth within that nation. The third step is trade-off. This is when rapid growth occurs in a few key export oriented industries. The economy breaks away from traditional practices and a critical mass of workers shifts from the primary to the secondary sector, which is known for manufacturing. Fourth is drive to maturity. Modern technology diffuses to a wide variety of industries and the workforce becomes more skilled and specialized. The economy is now much more diverse and less dependent on its original trade-off industries. Finally comes the age of mass consumption. The economy shifts from producing heavy industry goods to producing high value consumer goods and services. People have disposable income and the ability to purchase non-essential items like automobiles and electronics. This represents a high standard of living. While not every country follows these five steps perfectly, the model provides a powerful framework for understanding how the global economy works and how nations choose their destiny.